Let's get started. Uh, it appears after c4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, and instead of g3 that we studied last time, knight f3, and here we have like four knights in English opening. After knight f6, there are like a whole bunch of moves, like seven moves we gotta cover tonight. Uh, h3, Ivanchuk's pattern, e4, uh, very lately popular, d4, an old move uh, that is not considered to be any more good. d3, kind of reverse shavening, and a3, uh, an interesting option that are we going, we're going to meet with g6, and finally e3. So let's get started with h3. This was played uh, by Vanchuk once, idea is g4 by white. You play bishop before, it's like reverse Rosalimo. And you just want to give up this bishop for the knight and play bishop takes c3. Um, in case they go g4, you immediately have like e4. Same thing happens if knight e5, you just play e4. They take, you take. They play knight e4 and you play short castle. Position looks good. Uh, I don't think that anyone will face something like this. But if it happens, just play c5 and black is going to be better. So h3 is nothing that they want to idea with g4 early is simply nothing to seriously bring to white. Then d4. It's an old-fashioned variation. Uh, they just want to break in the center. Uh, after they play d4, we should take on d4. Uh, when they take by knight, we should play bishop b4. Reminds me of some um, English variations or Nemzo line where this bishop wants to be given for the knight on c3, uh, wants to create like double pawns on c3 and c4, and afterwards you, you're just happy to carry on exchanging pieces. So after bishop b4, uh, only reasonable reaction is bishop g5. Uh, very often I get in blitz knight takes c6. If that's what happens to you, you just have to recapture by b pawn, and uh, this one uh, cannot pose any serious problems uh, to us because we just want to play short castle and d5 afterwards with like a very active uh, game for black. So after like queens, I mean queen c2, people used to play the queen c2 just because they didn't want to um, have like broken pawn structure castles. You can take here and play early knight e4. Afterwards, you just uh, go with like, for example, queen c2, rook e8. You just want to go with d5, rook b8, even queen g5. I mean, if they play e3, of course, queen g5. So they can't make and develop the light square bishop. If they play something else, queen h4, d5. But I definitely think that black should be good here. So that's why after bishop before, most of these guys, instead of taking on c6, they just play bishop g5. When they play that, you play h6. Um, even though I covered this h6, I just have to point out that Boris Saver, in his book uh, Anti-Dots uh, um, Against English Opening with the Black Pieces, uh, he covered d5. And um, uh, d5 is an interesting active approach. I'm just going to give you this idea as an option. It's a little bit more aggressive approach here, not as positional as, um, as other variations. And I just give you this idea uh, as an interesting one to analyze, uh, analysis you can find in Everett's book. So after like h6, which I insist on, they have to uh, put the bishop back on h4, and you take on c3. Very much like playing with black pieces positionally against this structure. That's why I told you uh, tonight's lecture and all these variations that are not going to bring you uh, like a good amount of joy as a previous variation because mostly we're not going to attack but we'll play just positionally. So after like castles, e3 and knight to e5. Efimenko played like this, Mihal Tal played like this. Uh, the point of this move is that we uh, don't only try to go after the c4 weakness. Actually, this knight goes to g6 to parry out the activity of this annoying bishop on um, h4. So if they play something like bishop e2, 
then you should be going with knight g6 and knight e4, removing the bishop, uh, threatening on c3. In case of queen c2, where they defend, you just play rook e8, and after castles, something simple with d6, with absolutely fine. Then you'll take on g3, you'll play b6, followed by bishop b7. Uh, you at some point can even fix the weakness on c4 with some c5 and go after that pawn with bishop e6 or bishop e6. I'm just giving you some basic ideas. Black looks good in this position. Uh, don't forget about it's uh, knight e5 is move of such a big importance uh, because uh, from one point of view it goes after the c4 weakness, but more importantly it goes on g6 against that bishop on h4. So after like f3, rook e8, you immediately uh, want to point out how this rook on e8 could fight against this potentially weak pawn on uh, e3. Bishop e2, knight g6, bishop f2. And here, I analyzed this position and came up with the following conclusion. c5 uh, and queen e7, followed by b6, bishop e7, and playing like this. Position is fairly normal. If they play knight b5, it's just a different way of approaching here, because we just go with uh, d5, and black looks really, really good. All things considered. What you what do you actually have to uh, remember here? Uh, to play bishop before, and then you threaten bishop takes c3. If they go with uh, bishop g5, which is practically the best move for white, you just go with h6, and after bishop h4, you take on c3, definitely breaking this pawn structure, and going with knight e, uh, short castle and knight e5 afterwards. You shouldn't forget about the plan with knight e5, because this knight on e5 goes after the bishop on h4, and afterwards you just want to play knight e4, uh, picking up that bishop, and, you know, like playing d6, b6, bishop e7, or e8, with a good game for black. Um, that's all about this variation with, um, uh, with d4. Those are not the only variations. We've already covered like h3 and d4. It's time for uh, reversed shevening and with d3. Um, not the challenging line, uh, but here uh, it's definitely not a line to be underestimated. Why? Because we all know how uh, we actually, when I say that e4 players, know how Shevaningian and Sicilians are difficult to play against. And here, White actually goes step forward. He wants to play Shevaningian being up a tempi. It's not going to bring them anything that special, but considering the fact that we all hate to play against Shevaningian with a white pieces, actually it makes a very difficult task to black uh, to play against this creation as well. You definitely have to go d5, c takes, knight takes. And they go e3. Flexible setup. You go bishop e7, bishop e2, castles, castles, and bishop e6. This is like one of the main lines of Sicilians. And uh, here you just have to be familiar with typical plans for black. When they play like the most flexible uh, a3, I just want to show you like my um, general conclusion and my general uh, type of ideas in this position, and I'm pretty sure you're going to like it because it's aggressive. So you should be going with a5 to stop before. And when they play like queen c2, because uh, queen goes on c2 to control c3, to be able to play, I don't know, along the c file to play bishop d2, to play sometimes b b3 followed by bishop e2, we just go with f5. It's an important move for black taking some space and sometimes threatening some knight takes c3 followed by e4 ideas, or uh, in, more importantly, you just want to sometimes uh, use the rook lifting to place this rook onto the king's side with rook f6, rook g6, or maybe to even do that with a queen followed by queen d6, queen g6, but I'll show you how and after which plan. So after f5, they have like so many moves. Uh, generally speaking, you should always take the following approach. 
What are they played? Bishop. Bishop D2 is just the most common move. King H8. And this King H8 is an important move uh, in order to release the C8 square uh, for the bishop. And once you free it up, you're going to be able to, after you play and put this bishop to G8, to go with the queen D6 and queen G6. Don't forget, ideally, we always want to put this queen on G6. We can also do that by queen E8 and queen G6. Uh, but it's a little bit better to do it by a queen on D6 because queen on D6 keeps controlling C5 in case they ever want to go with knight A4 and knight C5. And you don't have to necessarily place your queen on G6. From D6, it can be played on H6 as well, while from E8, it has to go on G6. So after like rook f c1, bishop g8, bishop e1, and here you have like two options. Do you want to play queen d6, in which case you've got an option to place your queen somewhere like this, or you want to play queen e8, which in this specific case I prefer because it gives you rook f6. This guy tried to jump with the knight, b6, now you even see a good point of the, having this rook in defending the knight. Knight a4, rook d8. Completing its centralization, I see three queen g6. And after like queen a4, queen h6. What a, you can play rook after d6 and get a good game from the game Bishop Sakai played in European Club Cup many years ago. But you can also play queen h6, which I like so much. You free up the possibility for g5, g4. You free up uh, g6 square for maybe a rook lifting, rook f6, rook g6. I don't know, black just looks really, really promising here. So we've covered like three variations so far. Let me just show you what happens against a3. a3 is nothing to be worried of. And uh, when they play a3, uh, Abrach made a good point. Probably uh, this is from all possible reactions by black, the only system uh, where it turns out that the a3 is not like as beneficial as in other lines. It's probably the one with g6. And you can uh, play like Abrach says g6, g3, bishop, g7. And uh, here you get an option of playing a5, d6 and playing the main theoretical variation, which is uh, of the English opening, which is especially uh, <clears throat> good uh, for King's Indian players. Why? Because when you play a5 to stop b4, they play rook b1, you play d6, they go b4, you take take, and here you just go with h6. Why h6? To, to, to be able to pave up the way for this bishop so they can play knight g5. b5, knight e7, they go d3, you go bishop e6. And when they play bishop e2, you go queen d7. And no matter what I do, you just threaten bishop h3. Usually good players play rook e1 to avoid this and keep the bishop on g2. And then we go with knight g4. We have double idea. f5, f4, or queen f5, queen h5. I just showed you a very nice uh, attacking plan by black. I'm pretty sure you're going to like this one because it's, uh, I'd say, pretty straightforward uh, type of plan for black. And um, I always, when I was younger, used to enjoy these type of games and positions. So, apart from a3, g6, and don't forget, Abrach made a good point. Uh, it turns out that the a3 move is pretty useless against this g6 stuff, and therefore black is able to equalize equally. Although, um, I didn't go with Abrach's uh, approach. He says in his book, play d5, which is nice, which is nice reaction in the center. Um, and, of course, when you strike into the center, you just have a very nice game. Main line goes uh, with knight e5, d5, knight is hanging, knight c3. For, for example, this is concrete line. For the first time tonight, I'm just showing you something concrete. And after rook to b1, you just go bishop a2 and bring your bishop back to e6. Uh, draw was a great game, McNabb against Guinan in England back to 1999. Uh, we've seen this uh, variation. I don't think it's anything that's special for white. But if you ask me uh, what could be like better for a tactical player like you, uh, or if you just prefer tactics, 
then I definitely uh, would go with a5 to stop b4. And when they play like for b1 to play b4 at all costs, you just go with a6, b4, and you just go with h6. I like to complete my development with bishop e6, and I like to prevent knight g5 by white. No matter what I do, my if they play b5, my knight goes on e7. I want to play bishop e6, queen d7, followed by bishop h3, and black has a nice and pretty perspective game in terms of attacking chess. Apart from all these variations, there is one more line that became extremely popular lately. It's e4 move. So in this, in this four knights variation, this e4 move lately uh, scores the best for white. Um, classic approach by black in the previous years was bishop e4. And it really made sense. Nowadays, uh, it's not as good, uh, as good as it used to be because of d3, d6, and then they just go with a3. Position like this is considered to be a little bit better for white according to the latest and top engines because they have a, they, they play with the movable pawn structure. They can always choose when to break in the center and finally they have that bishop pair. So after like castles, uh, g3, I just wanna show you a nice plan here. I usually in these positions show like three plans to my students and I tell them, Play knight d7 followed by knight c5 and break with f5. That's one plan. And then you have another plan. Play h6, a6, and break it with b5 with some sort of compensation in the game and reactions on both sides and probably the best one. You just go with knight e7 and that's what Kasparov played like many years ago against um, Vallejo Pons. So you just bring your knight back to e7 in order to do what? To play c6 and d5, in order to bring this knight to g6. So take a look at the game. After bishop g2, knight g6, castle c6, rook e1, rook e8, knight e2, and Tomaszewski tried to provoke f3 and to close the light square bishop after queen b3, queen d7, with few alternatives planned for black, such as d5 at proper moment, bishop h3, to trade off the light square bishops. H5, H4 launching an attack on the king side because of the lack of the knight on F3. I believe that black has a very good chances on the king side. And apart from this, I just want to show you lately like the most popular line in the world. So instead of going with the bishop B4, where you simply threaten to take on C3 and to take on E4, and where they have to play D3, you just go like I previously showed you D6, uh, G3, you just go with bishop g4. Um, and after like h3, keep, you know, like just remove it, jump with the knight and play c6. Afterwards, uh, black just needs to have at least a playable type of game, even though the bishop here is on the white side. So that's the plan. Uh, but apart from this plan, I want to show you one more thing. For example, if after e4 you play lately the most popular move, bishop c5 by black. Uh, Karana played it against Carlsen or the opposite way. Uh, so after like knight takes e5, otherwise you know what, we just play d6, a6 and we, we have a great game. So they have to play knight e5, we take uh, on e5 and after d4 we'll play what Magnus Carlsen did in one of his games. After d takes e5, knight e4, they have queen d4 or they have queen f3. Uh, all these top uh, engine world-class players go with queen f3. You take on c3 and here for the time being, uh, actually uh, bishop is actually in the past bishop e7 used to be the best and uh, probably the only move by black, but nowadays it's not anymore like this. I'm showing you a game between Carlsen and Caruana, where Caruana played bishop a5, Carlsen played bishop f4, on bishop a3, uh, where, where they tried to stop castle, you play shocking d6 and short castle, where black should be fine, like in the game road against Lagi back to New York, 1990. Um, after like bishop a5, they have to play bishop e2, we go with castle, they go with castle and we play d6. Uh, position is really nice. 
if they take we're gonna take by queen after rook d1 rook e8 taking there and taking by this pawn uh, should give us a little bit let's just say unclear type of game because even if we count like a bigger number of this weak pawns actually it should be on the white side because he's got like three pawn islands well we have like we also have three but they, we just have one witness well they have three witnesses a two pawn c3 and c4 pawns and finally uh let me just show you what happens if they just play the e3 move it reminds me of some uh, sicilian type of games and here you should be playing with the bishop b4 bishop b4 is nice move because you want to give up this bishop for the knight so when they play like knight d5 uh, you have like uh, such a big number of options here uh, but i believe that after knight d5 uh, bishop d6 with the idea knight d5 and knight d7 would be good like a reverse gpa or grand prix attack but you can also bring it back to e7 and play more or less normal game after a bishop before the main move is the most flexible is queen c2 like if you're willing to take on c3 let it be but i'm gonna recapture by queen and you might have some problems after like uh queen c2 i play tournament game myself but i just decided to go with this bishop c3 queen c3 and then queen e7 it stops everything it stops d4 it stops b4 and uh, when they play like something uh, like bishop e2 you just go with uh with the castle uh, of course they should be going with the castle as well and then you just go with uh, something like rook e8 or just d5 but i like d5 because we react in the center they gotta take it he has to go somewhere on c2 or on b3 and then after like knight b6 bishop e6 black should be absolutely fine just like you see more or less normal game nothing that special but uh, black just looks absolutely absolutely fine in this one and finally uh, if e3 bishop before queen c2 uh, this is if you want to take on c3 i actually like to play castles and when they play knight d5 where they just uh, make like a very annoying threat on both of these pieces you just have to go with rook e8 and when they play queen f5 to take on f6 and to break the pawn structure and you play this you can play like this and after like g6 queen h5 to play d5 or to play e4 and to play that type of game uh, but you also can play like castles knight d5 and sorry bishop e, e7 also could be an option uh but you know what i play rook e8 and when they play queen f5 i always uh, go with d6 but this move is high of high interest so when they you threaten to take on d5 and to play d6 when they take central pawn themselves you just go with knight b4 which happened in a game of uh how well uh, who played it against somebody and uh, went with a very very nice attack afterwards at the moment like like just threatens d6 queen and f5 is going to be hanging uh, and that should be more or less normal continuation and just like you see i showed you all these lines within a small amount of time that was actually my intention here and we just have to check g3 line as well speaking of g3 i just want to show you like uh general generally good and equal plan like in the last variation we play bishop c5 idea is if they just carry on developing themselves to go with d6 but always d6 on time because otherwise they might end up having some knight takes c5 followed by d4 so you play d6 castles castles and in case of d3 you go h6 h6 stops bishop g5 and when they play e3 to be able to play b4 uh very nice move a6 uh, i prefer this move much more than um, a5 yes a5 does stop b4 but on the other hand a6 is gonna give you some rook b8 b5 ideas afterwards so before bishop a7 bishop e2 bishop g4 
clever move to provoke weakening of the king's side with h3. Bishop e6, queen d7, and here knight goes back on e7. When I told you um, in the beginning of this lesson that I want to teach you all these plans, take a look at this one. Your bishop always goes on a7. You always go with this better. But why do you play knight e7? Simply uh, because I'm not afraid if they play knight e2 or whatever, I'll play in the worst case scenario, rook b8 or even better c6. But the point is, why, why else did I put my knight on e, uh, e7? So I can play knight g6. Having knight on g6 and uh, given its possibility to play flexible c6 followed by d5 afterwards should always give black more than prosperous gain. So that's why I'm telling you after g3 you should play bishop c5 hoping to go into the same type of position we covered the last time in the English part 1. And that's the line with bishop, knight c6, bishop c5, a6, and knight g on e7. And finally, in case they play bishop g2, you play d6. Uh, we already spoke about this, and it's a nice game. Don't forget, you bring that knight back to e7 and play knight g6. You want to uh, simply secure it with some h6. You uh, bring your bishop back to a7, so that's how it has to look like a good game for black. In case they take on e5, which was considered to be one of the best reactions, you take on f2 and play knight e5. Watch out, c4 pawn is hanging. They gotta play e4. That's literally what preparing for this lecture I checked in the base of good players. You play c5. Usually people think when they play d4 they solved all the problems. No, they didn't. We play castle. And the point is you can never touch this knight on e5 because you're gonna have like terrible problems with, with the knight g4 and that's just fine. Uh, from another point of view, after e takes, queen takes, castles, uh, they just have to play like bishop f4. You play d6, h3, and I'll show you a game of my student. Bishop e6 is nice because it kind of forces white to take on e5. Uh, it forces white not to play bishop e2 because he might get some problems with the c4 pawn. But at the same time, uh, Kovacevic played rook to d1. Kovacevic was especially uh, proud of this move. Because after the game, he told me that on queen d6, uh, he saw some interesting ideas like queen takes c3. And I told him, yeah, that's nice. That's quite an interesting one because you have knight takes e4 followed by a taking by queen. And the more we exchange, the better response structure they should have. Bishop e2, queen c8, threatening on c4, rook a c1, bishop h3. Knight e5, queen e6, knight e6, queen e7, and... Uh, white can make a draw anytime they like, but if they just play for a win, position is getting like completely messy. It happened in, in a game Ivan Chukan and back to 1999. But just like you see, this looks okay for black. And finally, in case of 95, you take 95 e4, c5. What happens if they play d3? I usually uh, say that it depends on final destination of the light square bishop in white game. You play flexible d6. If king g2 happens, you play castles, you play a6 to play b5. Mm, of course, that's typical reaction. And on rook f1, with the idea of bishop g5, please watch out not to blunder something like this. Then you immediately can call it a day. So you play h6. And here, I want to go bishop e6, queen d7, and b5. It's kind of obvious that I want to break these pawns that I want to play with bishop e6, queen d7, possibly even taking advantage of the light, uh, light squares, so black is just fine. And finally, in case of e4, c5, d3, sorry, not d4, d3, d6, h3. Stops knight g4, but gives us short castle easily, bishop g2, and once again, I'm going to give you two plans. Jinji Hashvili, in his game, played many years ago, like... 40 years ago from now, he played a move a6, which is a typical plan of breaking the pawn structure with b5. They can't take. Don't worry about that. They can't take because you just have like such a great counter activity and I believe even almost winning position. And in case they go with the king g1, you already did your job because look at this. When they play king g1, 
please fill it. He threatens bishop g5. Don't forget about this trick. So you just play like h6, b3, bishop e6. And here, uh, this is like a good question for those who like to attack, but oops, sorry, definitely not this move. But also for those who uh, like to play positionally, knight h7. This knight goes on g5, and after king h2, queen d7, played f6. What an amazing uh, move by black, wants to play knight g5, and also uh, points out that the h4 by white is simply not possible because of knight g4, and they lose that bishop on e3. So after like d3, d6, uh, h3, uh, castles, bishop g2, I want to show you a different plan here, which is also very nice, knight e8. Your knight naturally goes on c7. It naturally wants to occupy d4 square. It supports a6 and b5, but at the same time uh, supports with existing king on f2 some f5 idea. So after knight e8, rook f1, knight c7, king g1, bishop d7. I like ideas of removing my knight from f6, even though I had possibility to play h6. This knight is way more active, and he does something. So after bishop e3, knight e6, king h2, and a6, b5, rook d8, and here f6. A very normal move in this type of game. You do not allow them any kind of surprising factor or to do anything there. You just play f6, you get a cool game, and black is just fine. Thank you so much for watching, and see you soon. Bye-bye.